Peace, Israel. This lesson's title is The Testimony. The Testimony. A lot of people in the house of Israel, they hear the word testimony. They have no idea what the testimony is and what it relates to as it pertains to the book. Okay, so what we're going to do on this, this class, on this lesson, we're pretty much going to cover the testimony, what it is, and where it can be found, how you can reference it. Because believe it or not, some people don't know what that is. Okay? Uh, let's start off this lesson. Let's start off with Psalms 119, 142. Okay? Let's start off with Psalms 119, 142. And it reads, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. And I will also finish this lesson with this exact verse. I want you to keep in mind that if someone tells you something as it relates to this book, if you would like to know whether that's something that's been told you is true or false, you need not go any further than to reference this law. Okay? So if it's a lie, put it up against the law, it falls apart. Okay? Because we have just read exactly what it is. Righteousness and the law is synonymous. Truth, righteousness, and the law, these are encompassing of the same thing. Okay? So if it's truth, it's going to have righteousness, and it's going to be the law. So if you want to know if it's true or false, you reference the law of the Most High, and you will know if what you're being told is true or if it's false. All right. Let's continue with the lesson. Uh, all right, here we are with Exodus 31, verse 18. Exodus 31, verse 18. And it reads, And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him, upon Mount Sinai, two tablets of testimony. Tablets of stone, written with the finger of Yah. So here clearly we understand that the testimony is the law. Without a doubt. Okay. I will read this again. Exodus 32. 31 excuse me. Exodus 31 verse 18. And he gave unto Moshe. When he had made an end of communing with him. Upon Mount Sinai. Two tables of testimony. Tables of stone. Written with the finger of Yah. Now let's go to Exodus. Chapter 25. We'll go back. Exodus chapter 25, and we'll go with verse 21 and 22. Let's start off actually with verse 16. Okay? Once again, we're in Exodus chapter 25, verse 16. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. So, the testimony was to be placed in the ark. We just read the testimony were the two tablets of stones given unto Moses. Okay? Now let's go ahead down to verse 21 and verse 22 of Exodus 25. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. From between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I will give thee, of all things that I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. So we understand clearly that the testimony is the law, is aspects of the law. The testimony are those commandments that were given unto Moses to give and to teach to the children of Israel. Okay, so we do understand that. Let's go to Exodus 26, and we're going to go with verse 34. Pretty much reiterating the same thing so you understand that the testimony is the law. Okay, once again, Exodus 26, verse 34. And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony in the most holy place. That's the temple of the Most High. Okay, so the ark was made 
for one specific reason. It housed the testimony or the tablets of the testimony. It housed the law. Okay, so you understand that. So if someone ever asks you what's the testimony, simply tell them it's the law. Excuse me, that's it. The testimony is the law. The testimony is the truth. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, make a few things clear pertaining to this law. <clears throat> All right, the law is everlasting. We know this. Okay, the law is both truth and the law is righteousness. And the law is the testimony. We just read that. We all know that you cannot change your testimony. Changing of a testimony is perjury. That makes it a lie. So we know the laws will not change. So keep these things in mind. Uh, the law has been given as early as Genesis. Okay. Adam had the law. Abraham had the law. Okay. Uh, for Adam, <coughs> for anyone to be cast out of some place. Okay, you cast out once you've have, have broken a law. Okay, you're not cast out for any reason. So Adam was cast out because of transgression. So the laws were in effect then. Uh, Abraham too had the law. Okay, and we can get that specifically in Genesis 26 verse 5. As a matter of fact, let's go. Let's go earlier than that. Let's go Genesis chapter eighteen. Genesis chapter eighteen, and let's go with verse nine. Okay. <clears throat> excuse me. Genesis. Excuse me. Genesis eighteen verse nineteen. Genesis eighteen verse nineteen, and this lets us know that Abraham had the law. Okay, Adam had the law too. Uh, specifically here, let's deal with Abraham. For I know him. That he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of Yah to do justice and judgment. That Yah may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Okay. Next we'll go to Genesis 26 verse 5. Genesis 26 and verse 5. And it reads. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Okay? So Abraham had the law. Okay? So did Adam. He also had the law. The law was in effect. Because if you didn't obey the law, then you were cast out. Okay? So the law has been in effect. So someone is trying to tell the house of Israel that, uh, Someone died for our sins, and that someone brought truth, and that someone brought righteousness, and that someone brought mercy, etc. Truth is the law. It has been here from the beginning, okay? And that individual was not born in the beginning, okay? That is clearly stated. Okay, so understand that the law has always been here, and no one brought the law, okay? No one brought truth and righteousness. It has always been here. It has been here with the Most High, okay? And it's been here as early as Adam with man. So keep that in mind. All right, let's go to, let's go to grace because uh, we've been told that uh, grace came with this idol and, and grace has been here before he was even born or supposedly born. So these things are made up. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Genesis Genesis 6 Let's go to Genesis 6 And we'll go with verse 8 But Noah found grace in the eyes of Yah So Noah found grace in the eyes of Yah So as early as the days of Noah You know, grace was extended to man so no one died and brought grace to us. No such thing, okay? Uh, if we go to the book of Ezra, let's go to Ezra 9. Go to the book of Ezra 9, verse 9. And it lets us know clearly also that grace was extended to the house of Israel. 
So this is this is nothing new. Grace is new to the house of Israel. Ezra 9, verse 9. And it reads, For we were bondmen, yet our God hath not forsaken us in our bondage, but hath extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia, to give us a reviving, to set up the house of our strong one, to, the repair, to repair the desolations thereof, and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. Okay, so mercy was extended to us, so mercy and grace we have always had. Uh, it's been extended to us. It was also extended to Moses. Uh, if we go back as early as Genesis, Genesis 33, verse 17. Okay. Genesis 33. Genesis 33, verse 17. Excuse me, excuse me. Let's go to uh, Exodus. Exodus 33, excuse me, not in Genesis. Exodus. Exodus 33, verse 17. And Yah said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Okay? So we have always been extended grace, one form or another. Had we not been extended grace, we wouldn't be alive for, or for our transgressions. Okay? So keep in mind that we've all, grace has always been here. Uh, let's go ahead and deal with the testimony and the law. This should be a very, very short, short lesson. Uh, Isaiah 8, verse 20. Isaiah 8, verse 20. And it reads, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Now keep in mind what light is. Uh, Let's go straight to Proverbs 6.23, and that will make clear what light is. That, that way there's no doubt on exactly what's being conveyed here. Proverbs 6, verse 23. I'm getting to it. My book is a bit shabby. From the usage. All right, here we are. Proverbs 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light, or the law is light, and reproof of instruction are the way of life. Okay? So if someone is lacking light, they're lacking this law. Okay? Hence, Israel would be groping at noon. They would be trying to feel their way around at noonday when it's bright outside. Because they will be operating in darkness, though their eyes will be wide open, okay? They will be operating outside of this law or without the law, okay? So, we know good and well, this, what's been covered as grace has always been here. Mercy has always been here. The law has always been here, okay? Because these things exist with the most high and the most high alone, all right? Now... Let's go to Isaiah 46, verse 8. Isaiah 46, 8. That will we keep in mind exactly uh, what we must do as it pertains to this law and this testimony. Isaiah 46, verse 8, and it reads, Or oh, remember, remember this, and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. These are speaking to Israel once again for us to kind of consider some things. Remember the former things of old, for I am Yah and there is none else. Okay? 
I am Yah, and there's none like me. No one can be compared to him, or you're not to compare anyone to him. He doesn't have any sidekicks. Keep that in mind, okay? Declaring the end from the beginning. The end from the beginning. If I give you the end in the beginning, in the beginning, which means there's no mystery for you there at all, okay? You know everything up front. That's the most high. That's the way he deals with things, okay? Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So, the counsel of the Most High is the counsel that matters. It is the counsel that will stand, okay? The test of time. That's exactly what this counsel, his counsel is. It is this law, okay? So, keep these things in mind. All right. Let's go to Amos 3, verse 7. As it pertains to the testimony, we'll understand clearly that the Most High doesn't do anything off the cuff. Before anything is done, he first reveals it to his prophets. His prophet reveals it to the people, and that's how the information is given to the house of Israel. Okay, so nothing is done off the cuff without warning. The people are warned first by the prophets because the Most High gives the information to the prophets first. He says this clearly. Amos 3, chapter 3, verse 7 reads, Surely Yah will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Okay? So if the prophets have never spoken of it, it has nothing to do with the Most High. Because the Most High's protocols, it is to first reveal it to his prophet. This is how he operates. Okay? So anything contrary to that, you don't have to worry about that. You worry about this right here, what these prophets are saying, because they get the information first, and that information is then given to us. Okay? Now, let's go back to the book of Isaiah. So we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 2. And we're going to deal with chapter 2. We're going to go to verse 3. Now, the reason why this is important, someone is telling us, or we were told by our enemies, that someone died for our sins. We know this is not true. Okay. Uh, Deuteronomy 24, 16 lets us know the house of Israel is in the law that every man dies for his own sin. So no man can die for our sins. That's made clear to us. Okay. Next, someone came to, he didn't, he came to die for our sins and he came to actually, he didn't come to do away with the law. He came to fulfill the law. None of this is so. Okay. So let's read exactly that this law will be in place even when we are returned to Jerusalem, okay? Uh, Isaiah 2, chapter 2, verse 3, and it reads, And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of Yah, to the house of the God of Jacob, okay? To the strong one of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his path, not paths, paths of many different ways. The Most High has one way. Okay, so we will walk in his path, not paths. If you read the book and study the law, you'll understand this. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of Yah from Jerusalem. So the law will go forth from Zion. That lets you know exactly how important this law is. So if all these nations, okay, will have to one day say, let's go up. To the, to the strong one of Jacob so he can teach us of their way of his ways okay and his path then it should be clear to you we are we are the house of Israel we are in these nations and we're following after their false idols all right so if they're gonna have to say that they are in error and they're gonna have to say that you know their ways will not profit them and they have to go up to Israel, okay, to get the laws, that tells you clearly whatever it is you're following right now is wrong. <clears throat> That's if you have any common sense. You will know clearly all these nations, they have to go up to Jerusalem. They have to go up to get the law from Zion. They have to. So therefore, what they have right now is incorrect. It is wrong. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, let's also go to Let's go to Micah chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. Micah 4, 2 and 3. Micah 4, 
chapter 4, verse 2. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of Yah, and to the house of the strong one of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his path. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of Yah from Jerusalem. Once again, this is the same thing. These prophets are consistent. Okay? So at no time, you know, are these prophets in, in it. There's no contention with them. Okay? They are in agreement. So you can find the same thing in several different places. Okay? Uh, and that's for, for, for validation, if nothing else. Okay? Uh, let me see here. Well, let's go to... Let's go to Zechariah. Zechariah 8. And let's go to verse 22. Verse 22 reads of Zechariah 8. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come up to seek Yah of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before Yah. So all these nations, all these many strong nations will have to go up and pay homage to the strong one of Isaac, the strong one of Abraham, the strong one of Jacob. So therefore, we know clearly whatever it is they're serving right now is incorrect. Okay? Thus, let's go to verse 23 of Zechariah chapter 8. Okay, verse 23 reads, Thus saith Yah of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold of all languages, of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is an Israelite. Okay? Saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that Yah is with you. So therefore the men of Israel, who have survived the purge, that 10% that have turned away from the idols, returned to the Most High Yah and His laws, all the other men of the other nations will grab a hold of you. Because you will be that powerful in the earth. Okay? Keep in mind that the house of Israel is to be a nation of priests unto all the other nations. And they will serve the house of Israel. So keep all these things in mind. Okay? So now, uh, let's go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 26. Deuteronomy 4, 26. Deuteronomy 4 verse 26 and it reads I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land where, whereunto ye go over Jordan to possess it ye shall not prolong your days upon it but shall utterly be destroyed and ye shall scatter you among the nations and ye shall be few in number among the heathen whither ye shall lead you and there ye shall serve gods the work of men's hands. That idol you serve, that cross on your neck, that is a graven image of a man, of someone that appears to be a man, the likeness of a man. If you read the entire chapter of Deuteronomy 4, it lets you know clearly that is idolatry in all fashions. Okay? Now let me continue once again with Deuteronomy 4. And we'll go ahead and reread verse 28. And there you shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But if from thence, verse 29, But if from thence thou shalt seek Yah thy strong one, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul, which means you have to drop that idol that you serve. <clears throat> When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou shalt turn to Yah thy strong one, and shalt be obedient unto his voice. To be obedient unto his voice simply means to obey this law. <clears throat> okay? Remember I've said in previous videos, lack of law equals lawlessness. There's no such thing as the Most High being lawless. It does not exist. Okay? He has laws. That's what this testimony is for. Okay? 
It is a testimony. So he has laws. So there's no such thing as, as lawlessness with the Most High. Okay, if you once again, if you read the entire chapter Deuteronomy 4, it lets us know clearly while we were in the wilderness, okay, we heard the voice of the Most High, but we saw nothing that had the shape of a man or anything of that sort. And we are warned here specifically that we are not to serve such things that has an appearance of a man or anything. Yet you have a picture of a man on the wall, have a picture of a dead man strung on a post around your chest. Okay? And what's most ridiculous is that man looks nothing like you. That's even crazy. And even if he does look like you, it's still idolatry. Okay? So you keep those things in mind. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. And then we'll finish up this lesson. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. Once again, the Most High is, is, is letting us know a few things here. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, and it reads, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Against you who? Against you, Israel. That I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. So once we were given this testimony, once we were given this law, it was plainly made to us that this law was not a vain thing. It was for us to choose life or death. All right, if we choose these laws and to adhere to them, our days would be prolonged. You have to die, but your days will be prolonged, okay? You will have peace. You will live a long life. You will be in good health, and you will reproduce. Your seed will continue to live. Thus, you live forever by means of your offspring offspring by your seed should you go contrary or walk contrary to the most high which we have done then life becomes difficult for us as we already know the sword that is death in all forms and fashion okay pestilence famine etc etc sufferings affliction is what is the result of us not following this law and that's where we are today okay so what we must do we must return to this law our only out is Deuteronomy chapter 30 that's the only way out of this all right the Most High never told us we needed to be baptized anywhere doesn't exist you can't find it okay this is lies taught to you by your enemies you read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and you will see the curses that were placed upon Israel. So as it pertains to the testimony, the testimony is the law. And the testimony is twofold. One, the Most High gave us a testimony. He's pretty much saying, look, this is my law. If you do not follow it, this is what's going to happen to you. Here's the law. Follow it. I'm going to give you these blessings. Don't follow it. I'm going to plague you with these curses okay so that is his testimony to us he's telling us this is what's going to happen that's his testimony and his word is tried and true it is sure okay now <clears throat> what our testimony is now is that yes we can testify because the most high said we the house of Israel are his witnesses Okay, so we can now testify that we have read this testimony, which is the law. We have read the Most High's testimony. We have borne witness, and we can currently bear witness to the fact that this testimony is indeed truth. Okay, because you can't give a testimony unless you are a witness to something. And if you are a witness and you give a testimony, the testimony has to be true. That's what a testimony is. Okay? Something that you can validate. So we can look at these curses and we can validate that yes, these curses are upon me. They have been on my parents, my parents before them. I can see it on my people before my very eyes. Therefore, I know that I am the house of Israel. Okay? So that is our testimony now. We can bear witness. The Most High has presented his testimony by means of the law. We've read it. 
we know we've transgressed against it and now we can look and we can bear witness to the fact that indeed this testimony is true because everything that he has laid out before time has come to pass and so therefore now by us bearing witness it's easy for us to believe in this thing because now we know because we can see clearly by means of us experiencing this and I hope this makes sense to you so in summary what we are to do we are to face Jerusalem and pray and we're to ask forgiveness for our forefathers transgression against the Most High and for our own transgressions against the Most High we're to read study and pray we are to also we're to do this law there's going to be some changes in your life if you decide to do it and it requires discipline that's what disciples are and I'm not talking about 12 disciples from the New Testament a disciple is anyone that follows a specific discipline that's what a disciple is okay so therefore if you're going to be a follower of this and you're going to adhere to the laws of the Most High that means you have to change somewhere somehow in no way did the Most High said you need to be dipped in water anywhere because that doesn't change anyone okay so now if you seek to have that change or you or you seek for a change this is the easiest and the fastest way for it to be done let's go to Psalms 7 Psalms chapter 7 and verse 19 and then we will close out yeah, Chronicles Psalms 17 Psalm 7 Psalms chapter 7 and verse 19 here we are at Psalms 19 verse 7 Psalms 19 verse 7 and it reads the law of Yah is perfect converting the soul the testimony of Yah is sure making wise the simple we've already cleared that the testimony is the law so the simple minded individual can be made wise by studying and following the laws the law is perfect okay let me read this again all right Psalms 19 verse 7 the law of Yah is perfect converting the soul the testimony of Yah is sure making wise the simple so a simple man becomes wise once he puts himself and immerse himself in this law and follows it okay now someone has told us that uh, you know there's this thing being said that all oh, the laws are too uh, the man can't follow law law is too hard that's why someone came and died for your sins all of this is nonsense okay because the law will go forth in the latter days from Jerusalem there will always be law on the earth always not just any law this specific law that we're reading here today okay so therefore the law is valid if you want to change your ways and you want to actually turn back from serving these idols you don't need to be dipped in water the most high didn't say that he said simply obey his voice in other words his testimony his law the true the tried and true cornerstone this law okay so keep these things in mind let's finish up once again with Psalms 119 142 and we're gonna wrap this up with that specific verse Okay. Psalms 19, 142. Once again, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, meaning righteousness is forever of the Most High, meaning truth is forever in the Most High, meaning his law is forever. It does not change. Okay. And thy law is the truth. So the truth is the law. You want to know what the truth is? Reference the law. If someone tells you something, you're not sure if it is, go in the law, put it up against the law, and you will see if it is true or not. Okay? So that covers this lesson. It's short. 
I'll try to get it out to you as soon as possible. Peace, Israel.